how to modify exercise through all stages of pregnancy. My name is Rebecca Gahan, owner of Kick at 55 Fitness and mom of three kids. I gained between 50 to 70 pounds with all three pregnancies. So I'm an expert because I live to survive it. So we hope you like our video and if you find it useful, please give us a like below, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on push notifications so you know when our next workout and or discussion posts. So let's get started with the first trimester. You've just found out that you're pregnant. You might be four or five weeks. You barely have two lines on a pregnancy test. And you can't see your doctor right away because they won't see you until you're eight weeks pregnant. So what do you do? Okay, first and foremost, ask your doctor, at least over the phone, if there are any precautions you need to take or any restrictions that you need to be aware of. If not, you're ready to go. Number one, the first thing that you can't do is go into a cone position. So that means you're lying on your back, you're on the ground, you're bringing your knees into your chest and you're crunching. That is the first piece of advice I wanna give you. That is a no-no. Now from there, you have to weigh in on what did I do prior to becoming pregnant? If you are engaging in high intensity interval training like Kick at 55 Fitness, then you can do that type of workout as you continue with your pregnancy. But if you were just doing, let's say, Pilates and yoga and more low impact exercise, then you're going to progress through your pregnancy with that type of workout. But pregnancy is not the time to start engaging in new intense activity. But can you engage in HIIT training like Kick at 55 if you did this previously and your doctor gives you the okay? Yes, that is the answer. So first trimester, you're wondering, am I shaking the baby up? Am I doing something wrong? No. All that you're doing is relieving your stress. You might be minimizing the nausea because sometimes when you work out, your body is focused on helping you deliver red blood cells to the muscles that need it. And so as a result, you might not notice all that nausea. That's kind of a plus. Also in the first trimester, at some point, you're gonna to start to feel really tired, really exhausted, and again, that nausea might kick in. Is that the time to push it and say, I'm going to the gym? You're gonna be surprised with my answer. The answer is no. Listen to your body. You are creating all of the bodily functions and hormones and organs for the baby in the first trimester. So if your body's saying, I am barely awake enough to get the mail, then that's not the time to exercise. Trust me, you will have time in the second trimester to do so. But if you want to just lay on the couch and watch reruns of Felicity, which is what I did, then that's okay. Because you will more than make up for that in the second trimester when you're feeling much better. And again, if you have days when you just can't keep any food in, that is not the time to engage in any sort of exercise. Just get through the day. But on the days that you're feeling good in the first trimester, take advantage of them. If you feel like you're a little bit better in the morning, which a lot of women are, even though they call it morning sickness, then do a light workout in the morning. It doesn't have to be 55 minutes. It can be 30 minutes. It can be 20 minutes. Do whatever your body says you can do. But if you were doing top jumps, if you were doing star jumps, burpees, can you do those while you're with child in the first trimester? The answer is yes. And technically, you can actually go flat to the ground in a burpee. But let's not go there. Let's just say no more going flat to the ground on my stomach once I find out I'm a child. Okay, so now let's talk second trimester. Second trimester is my favorite trimester. That is when the nausea usually subsides between 14 to 16 weeks and I start feeling like a person again. Who can actually leave the house? I had severe, severe, severe morning sickness with all three of my pregnancies. So, second trimester, you have a little bump, okay? Your pelvis is really starting to like, tilt a little, but it doesn't necessarily always look like you're with child, which is frustrating because you want everybody to know that you're pregnant and not just somebody who ate a lot of dinner rolls. Don't worry, you'll get there. So with the second trimester, that's the time when you can kind of go back to your normal workout routine. 
If you were lifting dumbbells, let's say you were lifting 15 pound dumbbells, you might be able to continue on for the first part of the second trimester. Can you use a barbell? Yes, if you're using 30, 40, 50 pounds, continue on. Can you do the cone position? No, that is, again, a complete no-no for the duration of your pregnancy. So, with the weights, initially, you might not need to vary at all. But then as you progress through the second trimester and your stomach is getting bigger, you might have to take the weight down proportionally. So what does that mean? If you're lifting 15 pound weights, maybe now you reduce it to 12 pound for upper body. If you were lifting a 40 pound barbell before for lower body, now it's a 30. But just because you are pregnant does not mean that you need to now reduce your weight by half, by 25%, by 50%. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't exactly go in order there. Whew. With the second trimester, at first, you might be 100% fine doing high knees, squat jumps, lunge jumps. But then, as you progress in the second trimester and your belly gets bigger, it might not feel so comfortable to have both feet leaving the ground. So usually what happens at some point in the second trimester is we stop doing tuck jumps and we just go where one foot is only leaving the ground at one time. But it's not all or nothing. You might have some days where you feel like, oh, feels a little odd having both feet leave the ground. And some days you're like, God, I could do burpees and tuck jumps all day long. You have to listen to your body. Sometime in the second trimester, not always, but as your stomach enlarges, you might start to feel a pulling in the midsection of your core. Okay, so what's happening is, is as the baby, your uterus is expanding, we're pushing against the muscle wall. So doing some sort of plank, burpee, push up, if you feel that pulling from that motion, you need to take yourself to an incline. So imagine I have a plyo box here, a bench, a couch, an ottoman, all that needs to happen in the second trimester, when and if you feel this, is incline your body for the push-ups, the burpees, the planks. Why is that? Because if you continue to push against that muscle wall, as it's pushing back at you, you will create a separation in the muscle wall that will be exposed postpartum. If that separation is greater than two centimeters in diameter, in diameter, in centimeters, then what will happen is you will have something called a diastasis. Now, it's not the end of the world. You can usually resolve it with physical therapy, but let's not go there. Let's not have that happen. All right, so you're nearing the end of the second trimester. You've been lifting weights up overhead the entire time. And you've heard all these people say, you're not supposed to lift weights overhead. Nonsense, okay? Everyone is different in their pregnancy. I have women who lift weights above their head the entire pregnancy and they're 100% fine. And then I have women who start at 22 weeks and they're like, nope, not gonna do it. Here's why. It's nothing that's going to hurt the baby. We are producing, not me, but you, are producing a hormone called relaxin. This relaxin relaxes your muscles and joints and prepares your body to breastfeed. Even if, you want, even if you decide you're not going to breastfeed, you can't tell your body no. And this can make you more prone to injury. So as a result, we just want to be careful. Little tweaks and pains, we need to listen. If you're lifting up overhead and you feel a twinge in your upper back and your neck, now you know it's time to stop. But again, it doesn't happen to everybody. It's not all or nothing, and it's not the same for all. Lying on your back. This usually happens to everybody, eh, probably around 25 weeks, but again, it depends on how you carry. Women who carry low feel it a little bit later. Women who carry high feel it a lot earlier. I felt like <laughs> this happened to me the day I went into the second trimester, lying on the ground. So whether you're doing exercise like a chest press or you're just laying on the ground watching TV or you're laying on the ground doing whatever yoga is for athletes, you start to feel like, oh my God, I can't breathe. Don't worry, your body's sending you a warning signal. Everything is starting to push into the vena cava, which is then inhibiting your breathing. You are not going to suffocate. But it's now time to incline your head 
whenever you go to a supine lying on the ground position. Okay, that's all that is happening. So whether you're doing a chest press, you're doing a skull, crush, cr ugh, skull crusher, you need to elevate your head. That's it. All right, third trimester. You might be huge as I was. As I said in my intro, I gained between 50 to 70 pounds while I was pregnant. And that's because I didn't have somebody like me guiding myself, which is why I started kick at 55. But that's another discussion. So third trimester, you're tired, you're ready to get this pregnancy over with, don't stop working out. The more squats you do, the more active that you are, the better your delivery and labor will be, the shorter you will be actively pushing. But again, we need to be smart. Maybe the second trimester wasn't the time when you had to stop doing tuck jumps, but now in your third trimester, you're definitely feeling pelvic pressure when you're jumping. Listen to that pelvic pressure. You do not want to put yourself into premature labor because you've been jumping around, not listening, or you're getting overheated. So when you feel either A, overheated, or you are feeling like there's some pelvic pressure, you need to sit down, elevate your feet, get some water, call your doctor. Always call your doctor if you feel pelvic pressure. And the reason being is we want to make sure that these are not real labor pains that are occurring. And don't worry, they're probably not. But again, you need to listen to your body. So we're going along, we're at 37 weeks. You're like, I feel great, I can keep doing this workout. Then do it. I have had tens, hundreds of women who do this workout up until the day they deliver. It is really important though, that all along the way, you listen to everything from the second trimester, from the first trimester, about lifting the weights overhead, Maybe at 37 weeks, that's the magical time when you can no longer lift overhead. Again, you probably will have to stop lying on the ground sometime in the second trimester. The most important piece of the third trimester is to not cross that fine line between keeping yourself active and promoting labor and delivery and opening up your cervix, but not having it happen too early. Now, one thing that I wanna mention for all three trimesters is the talk test and the perceived rate of exertion. This is the standard. So it's no longer about your heart rate. It is about how do you feel when you're exercising? Do you feel like you can have a conversation but you're slightly breathy? Good, that's how you should be. That's a seven out of 10 max on the perceived rate of exertion. But if you're like, I can't catch my breath, too high. Or if you're like, hey, listen, I'm gonna go out later. Well, now you need to crank it up a bit, okay? So seven is the max. Somewhere between five to seven is where you want to be. So that concludes all three trimesters. I can't wait to see you there. Follow our prenatal workouts and further discussions on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining our discussion on how to modify through all stages of pregnancy. We hope you found this very useful and insightful and give us a like down below and subscribe, most importantly, to our YouTube channel. Remember also to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, send us feedback about what you wanna hear more of or less of. And finally, check out our common myths of pregnancy. We're gonna uncover some that are true and some that are false, or they might all be false. See you soon. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on push notifications so you know when our next workout posts.